wax inlay. It's a simple, fun technique, and I thought I'd show you how I do it. Um, on bone dry clay, you lay down a, a wax covering. I use Forbes wax, then I wait till the next day and it's hardened up a bit. Then I take a stylus and I cut fine lines through it and come back with a brush and lay black underglaze on top of those lines so they sink in down into the clay below. It gives a delicate, lovely line quality. All right. This is the tool. And let's go to work here. So now on this piece, I put a little bit of underglaze into the wax itself and I drew a painted with that so I could kind of see where I was going. Um, so that's why you see these gray brush marks. I put a little bit of underglaze in the wax and there where it's white, um, that's just straight wax, no underglaze. Um, then my plan is to Use the gray underpainting as kind of a guide, respect it or not, as I please going forward. So I draw through the wax and then I lay some black on it and I can see what I've been up to. It's no longer just pale gray and white lines. And I can see how I'm doing and what I've done. I'm wondering what, I have I, what have I done? What have I done? And what is and is not? What's bubble and line? Oh, 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 yeah. I cut in a fine line with a stylus. Um, it's a line quality that I can't get otherwise. It's very cool. But maybe a knife-like tool would be even better um, than what I have here, which is just like a, a metal stick with a point. And I love black, but you could use red, whatever color um, underglaze you like, but water it down. You see it's kind of watery. Otherwise, it doesn't resist very well. It sort of coats the wax rather than dropping into the line. Make it watery. Um, then, um, really a lot of fun, this technique. What else can I tell you about it? I'm not sure how it's going to turn out with the gray painting and wax underneath. We'll see. And there you go. Reminds me of grade school. This sculpture is of a heroic young woman. It almost sees the back part kind of looks like uh, a headrest. And I've got a bird and another figure on her headdress here. Um, it's going to be a challenge to figure out how to finish this, this sculpture. Um, but I made that smooth volume on the back so I could do a lot of painting and drawing, of course. Now um, we'll spin around to the back side and the drawing and painting. And you can see that it's a little bit hard here to see what I've been doing. It's kind of murky and gray and blotchy. So what I do next is I get a piece of toilet paper and buff off the underglaze, off of the wax. I, I needed to see all my lines, so I actually took a piece of toilet paper and I wiped. and the color stays in the cut surface and I can, I can see my lines better when I do that. And over here, because I have this gray painting underneath, I went back in and I drew with my tool. This is a, an x-ray of a baby bird. Maybe I should do another one. Okay, so I went like this. Mm -hmm. 
and that um, line goes down into the white clay. So now we have two grays here that I painted in wax and the lines that I filled in um, with black. And up here, here again, I, I took my stylus and I made some white lines by going down into the clay. So you can see where I painted with wax underneath in gray and white. Then I cut through and I laid in my black lines. And finally I came in again and I drew white lines right down into the white clay. The wax is a very beautiful surface in and of itself and perhaps later on, after it burns off in the kiln, I'll have to apply some again to get that glossy, lovely quality um, of the wax. Have fun with this technique. Bye-bye.